Hey everyone, Sonic's Day here, back at it again with another video. Now in today's video I wanted to discuss what a Mario and Sonic crossover would be like. And no, I don't mean the Olympic Games and I don't mean any kind of party game, I'm talking about a platforming adventure type crossover. Now I'm not saying there's any information that there's a new Mario and Sonic crossover in the works or anything like that, this is sheerly me and my hopes and desires of my two favorite video game, well, two of the three of my favorite video game characters crossing over. And if you're curious, that third franchise happens to be The Legend of Zelda, and they've already had a crossover with Sonic before, but albeit it was just one level in Sonic Lost World, but hey, it was an enjoyable level, nonetheless. But anyway, to get down to business here, I've been having this, I guess, fantasy that there would be a Mario and Sonic crossover ever since I really got invested in the Sonic and Mario series when I was around maybe 8 or 9 years old. These two franchises were a huge part of my childhood, and it was a childhood that I honestly love and adore to this day. I mean, I look back on the Mario Sonic Olympic Games games, which I'm going to discuss in another video, and I just am in awe because I'm thinking about how awesome it is, especially for 90s kids, to see two rivals, once rivals, now, I guess, being friends in the same game. It's kind of wild. I mean, obviously, I didn't grow up in the 90s, I'm a 2000s kid. But this is honestly insane, even as a, I guess, non-90s kid. But anyway, Mario and Sonic's first game together was an Olympic Games type party game. Wow, try saying that five times fast. But either way, this was kind of a letdown. I'm thinking that most of us really wanted to see some sort of action-adventure type crossover with Mario and Sonic fighting Bowser and Eggman, who both of which are trying to take over the world and maybe even kidnap Princess Peach on the side, I don't know. But either way, most of us agreed that these characters fit so well together that it was just heavenly to see them perhaps be on the same screen. But then again, here's the question. How does a Mario and Sonic game work? Especially if it's going to be a platforming game like we always see from each of their own individual series. I mean, currently we're seeing Mario take on multiple different gameplay formulas such as the uh, 2D gameplay he has for New Super Mario Bros. series and we also see him take on the RPG gameplay for Paper Mario and I guess the Mario and Luigi series. I'm not sure if they're going to continue that. Hopefully they do because those are awesome. But we're also starting to see more sandbox gameplay like um, Mario Odyssey and also Bowser's Fury. If you take a look into that, that is also going to be a sandbox type gameplay. Then lastly, we have the 3D world type gameplay, which is really different from almost everything else. It's closer to sandbox, but it's like a sandbox 2D kind of mesh. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it works. And that's the important thing here. I mean, we also see Sonic tackle multiple different gameplay formulas, such as the boost gameplay, what they used in um, Sonic Generations and Sonic Unleashed and stuff like that. Sonic Colors as well. Sonic also has a 2D type gameplay, which was used recently in uh, Sonic Mania. I mean, it's a bit different than like Sonic 4 Episode 1 and Episode 2, but hey, 2D is 2D in my opinion. Then, of course, we have the adventure gameplay which tackled basically Sonic Adventure 1 and Adventure 2. Later on down the line, we had uh, Sonic Heroes, which was a completely different formula than we've seen before, pretty much switching between characters, and I guess it was semi-adventure, but not really. I don't know. It's tough. Sonic has also tackled RPGs in this time, or I guess he did it once, but hey, it, once is enough. Trust me, this is enough. And of course, we also had the Sonic Lost World gameplay. I mean, I just made note of the most notable ones to me, if you have any other ones in the comments, please let me know down below. Also, I love Sonic Battle, so don't think I'm not including it. I love Sonic Battle. Like, my gosh, I can't stop playing it. Seriously, Sonic Battle's gameplay is amazing. If you haven't played that game yet, please play it. But anyway, to get back on track, I'm thinking that Mario and Sonic's gameplay, and I'm sure everybody else knows this, they don't match. Not in the slightest. You really can't make anything work here. So making a platforming game with these two characters is kind of hard. Also, you have to accommodate to those characters. You know, Sonic is fast. Mario is also moderately fast, but he focuses on sort of exploration more than speed. And Sonic's more of a speed type guy. I mean, you can explore, but it's not really his thing. So knowing for the sheer fact that you have to accommodate for both of these characters to really make this seem like a Mario and Sonic crossover kind of makes my job a little difficult here. You see, because I can't just take Mario and shove him into a Sonic boost game. It just doesn't work because how is Mario supposed to boost? That's not what he does. He's not known for that. Not even a Mario game anymore at that point. The same thing goes for Sonic. I just can't take Sonic and shove him into a Mario 2D game because where's his speed? Is Sonic even going to be fast? That's his whole character thing. I can't just make Sonic slow to accommodate for Mario. It doesn't work that way. 
And in my opinion, this is kind of the hardest part of making a Mario and Sonic crossover because to be honest with you, the story is there and we'll get to that in a moment, but the story is there. The gameplay, not so much. You need to accommodate to both and doing this, you can't corrupt another character. You can't make Mario boost. You can't make Sonic slow. It doesn't make any sense and it's hard, but we're going to work through this. Trust me, your boy Sonic's has got you. So with this in mind, I have devised multiple solutions for how Mario and Sonic can operate. First solution, which I believe is to be the most obvious one, is to separate their gameplays. You can just have Mario do his regular levels, I guess, which would be like 3D world type gameplay because you have to make it work somehow. You can't just have Sandbox and then have Sonic do whatever. And Sonic would be doing the boost gameplay. So it'd be kind of switching. Like every now and then you play as Mario, every now and then you play as Sonic. However, I think this voids the opportunity of playing as Mario. Mario and Sonic on the same screen because it just really wouldn't happen because how is Sonic supposed to boost on 3D world levels? Doesn't make any sense. The other option here is to bring the run button back and you can continue to have the 3D world gameplay where you can play as both Mario and Sonic on the same screen at the same time. And I'm going to be honest with you, I think this would really work. I mean, Sonic would not be going too fast to the point where Mario can't keep up but he would still be going moderately faster than Mario. Sonic kind of had sort of a semi 3D world type game with Sonic Lost World. The worlds were pretty, you know, expansive and big. They were levels at the end of the day. They were pretty, I guess, not too short, but not too long either. And they were fun and enjoyable. At least that's my opinion with Sonic Lost World. And they both have the word world in the title. So it's a dead giveaway. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but in all honesty, I feel as though Sonic could work in a 3D world type gameplay. It would not be totally corrupting his character because you can give him the parkour and stuff like that just to make him different than Mario, like a little bit different, but it would still work nonetheless. The other thing they could try is doing 2D. Now, this is not ideal for me in any stretch of the imagination because I'm not the biggest 2D guy out there. I'm a big 3D fan. I love 3D anything. Well, almost 3D anything. However, what this does again is it limits Sonic speed. Sonic will not be moving as fast as we normally see him doing the boost gains, which is definitely probable he's not going to be able to do that. But he's going to be able to go a little bit faster than Mario just to make him stand out and a bit different. Now, the only downside to this is it's a bit different from 3D World because I don't think Sonic could be able to have the parkour abilities. So that would make him really similar to Mario and kind of, I guess, sort of the same character, just a bit faster. Again, not ideal, but hey, it works. And my other thought was doing sandbox gameplay. It can work with two players, and here's where I've seen it done. Have you ever played any of the LEGO games? Now hear me out. Sonic was in LEGO Dimensions. The way Sonic was made in that game was he was fast. He was a fast character, probably one of the fastest characters. But not only that, it worked. It wasn't too fast where another character would be completely gone or off the screen or whatever because there was like a split screen option. So you could have another person pop in there and it could be like a dynamic split screen or something like that. So that can work there. You don't have to obviously do Legos, but hey, Mario and Sonic can work in that kind of style. And I think that would kind of please most people because you didn't, in essence, you'd have the adventure formula back and you'd also have the sandbox Mario games back like Odyssey. In my opinion, I think this is the best route to go in. I feel like this accommodates everybody, or at least most people, because I feel like the general audience really wants the adventure formula back and the general audience really likes the open world uh sandbox mario games and i feel like you can keep both i mean sonic would be moving a little bit of a faster pace but that would work because you'd still have mario being able to do stuff and not feeling like he's completely useless now sonic would have to slow down at some points like lego dimensions he hasn't he can't just speed through every single level because that just doesn't work you have to slow him down at some sections where he can like figure something out, maybe like some sort of puzzle to keep it more also Mario related. Now, like I said, this is my favorite option. I love this option with everything in me. However, I don't think it's the most likely option. I just don't think so. You might be wondering, why is it not the most likely option? It makes the most sense. Or maybe you think it makes the least sense or maybe you completely disagree with me. But I don't think it's the most likely option because simply Sega is going in a direction where they want to keep the boost formula going. I'm not sure if they're ever going to bring back the adventure formula. I mean, I personally hope so. But I just don't see it happening. And also, if a Mario and Sonic crossover was going to be done, it would have been done a long time ago. But hey, if they were to do it, this is the option to go with. But if you have any other options, let me know down below on what it would be like what would you make the mario and sonic platformer play like the gameplay i want to know what you guys think down below if i missed a gameplay formula that you would include let me know down below maybe you'd make a completely new different type of gameplay formula please 
Let me know down below. I am really interested in hearing your responses. Next thing I want to discuss is the story. What would the story be like? Now, I know Mario doesn't go heavy in on his stories for the most part. I mean, Bowser's Fury looks legit. So I don't know. This might be a new page for Mario. We might be seeing thick stories from now on from the Mario franchise, which I am super hyped for. And also, Sonic has already had super amazing stories before with like the Adventure Story, Sonic Unleashed Story, and stuff like that. So, I really want to break down on what this story would be like. Now, as I said before, the story writes itself. Mario and Sonic have already established themselves in each other's worlds. They know each other. Everyone's already close and buddy-buddy. And that includes Dr. Eggman and Lord Bowser. And it's funny because we've actually seen a Bowser and Eggman team up in the Mario and Sonic Olympic Games Winter Edition for the DS. And... Not gonna lie, I don't remember it at all. Not very much of it, but I remember enjoying it, and I think that's all that matters. But then again, that could be the nostalgia vitamin kicking in. If you like this story, please let me know down below. I want to hear your responses. Please keep them rolling. I check these comments every day, pretty much. <laughs> but with that out of the way, let me get to my story. To put it simply, I'm going to start off with Bowser and Eggman's common goal. Now, for the first game, it's not gonna be a go big or go home type moment. It's gonna be very low key. Like, look at the Sonic movie. It was very low key. Like, it wasn't anything going groundbreaking off the walls. They didn't implement any chaos emeralds or anything like that. It was very simple. Just a quick way to ease in everybody to get into the first game and eventually prepare them for the inevitable sequel. And yes, I'm talking sequels before I even tell you the story of the game because let's be honest, Mario and Sonic, they sell. Just their names on the cover, it sells. Especially with their names together on the cover, oh boy, it sells. I mean, why else do you think we have six installments of Mario and Sonic Olympic games? Great games, but Mario and Sonic, they sell. Okay, but in all seriousness time, no more playing around. We're getting to the story. So I personally believe the common goal for Bowser and Eggman would most likely be the amusement park. They both want some sort of giant theme park. And if you're thinking that Bowser actually doesn't, but you know Eggman does, Bowser has proven that he likes theme parks and stuff like that in Super Mario 3D World. It's there. There's a theme park that's like the final world. It's completely theme parked up, and I think it's legit. But anyway, moving on. Um, so their inevitable goal would definitely be, for the first game anyway, they want to build some sort of giant theme park. They want this to be the grand scope of things, and they want to take over the world using the theme park. And I'm also thinking that the Steam Park could run on the power of the Stars and the Chaos Emeralds. And also maybe even the Master Emerald again, because I'd be cool to bring that back. But anyway, Mario and Sonic see them in their acts of trying to set up the Steam Park with the Master Emerald and the Chaos Emeralds. And of course, the Stars. And I was thinking Mario and Sonic could instantly be set on their adventure after that. Traveling from world to world to catch up to Bowser and Eggman. And of course, save the world so the next question probably is well which world does this take place on because you see we've got mario's world and sonic's world two completely different worlds well i'm here to tell you this right now it's in both worlds so i'm thinking it'd be like sonic colors where you're basically just planet hopping you're going from one planet to the other planet to the other planet but i'm thinking it'd be more so like um you'd be planning hopping from mario's planet to sonic's planet and back and forth over and over again and it'd pretty much work like that like you see because we got, you know, Mario, they can be over in Mario's world first or whatever. Then Eggman and uh, Bowser can flee to Sonic's planet to get a Chaos Emerald or something like that. And then, of course, Sonic and Mario chase after them to Sonic's planet. And yeah, so on and so forth. It'll just keep planet hopping back and forth. But they'll be going to different spots in each of their own worlds. Another thing they could do is just implement a whole new world for Mario and Sonic. I mean, it works. I mean, I just think it'd be cool to just keep the same aspects from their games. it feel more, you know, lively that way. It'd feel like... You're playing as Sonic in the Mario universe, and you're playing as Mario in the Sonic universe, and that'd just be kind of unique and kind of, like, a really cool incentive. Okay, so now let's talk about playable characters, and I'm thinking, of course, we're going to keep um, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and, of course, maybe even the Toad, because if Peach is not getting kidnapped, she's normally playable. And since I gave you four from the Mario, I'm going to give you four from Sonic. We're going to go Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. It just makes sense that way. I don't care if you hate Amy, hate Knuckles, or any of them. It's just the core four. That's what we're rolling with here. But the next question is, what about the unlockable characters? And then, of course, you can have, like, your Toadette, your Rosalina, your Shadow, um, your Silver. I mean, that's just the extra incentive to get the game. Maybe some DLC or something like that. I don't know. But I feel like you can definitely milk this game just for the characters alone. Because there are so many great characters in each of these franchises. And they much deserve 
appreciation. What characters would you like to see in this crossover? Let me know down below, because, I mean, it'd be really cool to just see about anybody. But I don't want to go, you know, too far, especially if this is going to be the first game. If there's multiple afterwards, I'm sure Sega and Nintendo will want to put more in the second one or third ones or whatever. But uh, let me know down below who you'd want to see in this killer crossover. Anyway, that is how I personally would make the Mario and Sonic platforming crossover. That's how I would do it. Let me know down below how you would do it because again, I'm checking them comments. I am reading them. Oh, I will be reading them, having some popcorn, you know, checking them out like that. You know how it is. But anyway, that's all I wanted to discuss for this video. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And also check out my other videos. I talk a lot about Sonic on this channel. Probably too much about Sonic. But hey, you can never go too much Sonic if you know what I mean. But um, yeah, that, that's all I got to say for this video. This is Sonic's just signing out. Thanks again so much for watching. Peace. Why are you playing that trash?